Hey everyone, welcome to Encore, and today it's crafts time, and I'm going to show you guys how you can repaint old shoes. This is an old battered shoes, and you know me and my shoes, I collection, <laughs> I have a lot of shoes. And um, I needed some spiffy looking 30 shoes, so I made this one using some beauty tools that's probably just sitting around you already. So keep watching, and I'll show you how you can redecorate your old shoes. Watching Encore Makeup. Blend, blend, blend. Hi, Noren. Stop using my lipstick. Hey everyone, welcome back! And today it's crafts time and we are going to be painting shoes using your beauty tools. So you already have a round. How cool is this? Look at this shoe. Like, this is an old pair of shoes. You can tell since um, a spectator style shoes. And I'm one of those people that has problem <laughs> throwing away shoes, hats. And I'm sure many of you guys do too. Purses. Like, I know a lot of people that have problem throwing away purses or whatnot. Especially when they're still in good condition, just like this one. It's just an old style, but if you repaint them, hey, it looks piffy. And of course, I'm in a production of 42nd Street, the musical, and I thought, you know, making some really, really spiffy shoes that are kind of like reminiscent of the 30s, 40s, will be great for the production so I painted this one and I also painted a pink one that matches one of my costumes in the show and this is the old cap toe style so look at that right and today I'm going to demonstrate how you can paint and reconfigurate whatsoever your old shoes is probably like collecting dust in your shoe closet or your shoe rack and whatnot and here's a good sample this is an old brown shoes hello nobody wears this anymore right okay maybe some but again it's still in good condition and just needs a little redecorating and repainting and that's what I'm going to do today so I already pre-masked uh, the areas that I don't want painted I wanted to keep them as you can see over here it's like a beautiful um, kind of like a leather brown color it's got texture in it I wanted to keep this part right here so I'm just going to repaint it and I think for this one I'm going to do two tones of green but for the front part over here we're going to do something awesome like maybe like a snake skin yeah we'll do a snake skin pattern on this one and it's going to be kind of like a uh, mint green and kind of like a nice darker green over here and then we're going to keep the um the natural brown on this part over here okay so the first thing i'm going to talk about are the paints that you're going to be using now there are two paints that i've been using for quite some time now that i really love on shoes and this one right here is from a company called angelus and these are specifically designed for leather shoes, leather and faux leather, vinyl, things like that. And one thing I like about this is that they do not crack or crease or anything like that, especially if it's going to be applied on shoes where you're going to have some areas that's going to crease because the way you walk and the way the leather bends or vinyl or whatsoever. And uh, this is the one that I really prefer. Now, this particular kind of paint are only available kind of like online um, this is two dollars for this uh, I believe this is a two ounce or one ounce no this is a one ounce bottle it's two dollars a company called turtle farm which I get them from and then the second paint that I really really like is of course from createx all right and these are acrylic paints they're designed for anything and everything of course but the only difference is that this you're going to need to heat up after you apply it you're going to need to heat it up or heat set it using um, a hair dryer or a heat gun for about 15 seconds on each area and whatnot but it works just as fabulous as the Angelus paint so one of these two will, will work for this project so first I'm going to use my nail polish remover and this is from Zoya and just a cosmetic cotton ball and we're going to remove the uh, shine on the leather shoes now the shine usually comes from the factory and this basically uh, prevents the polish or the initial polish that they put from fading and whatnot. And so you can see it's rubbing off the paint and uh, also the sealer, anything that shines, it's kind of like a lacquer finish or whatever. Um, it's going to remove that. So you basically just remove that initial coat or that sealer coat 
from the shoe manufacturer off of the area that you're going to be painting. So once you've taken the shine out, all right, that kind of like finishing polish, I'm going to show you the difference. So I masked this earlier, but I'm going to show you how it should look like. Here you go. See how shiny that is compared to that because I took the shine out. So that's what it should look like. It should matte out when you take that shine. So I'm going to keep that shine on here because I'm not going to paint in this area. I wanted to keep that brown color. And um, so you just mask whatever areas you don't want painted. Okay, our next step, we're going to sand the area using a, an emery board or a nail file. You can also use a sandpaper, like a really, really kind of like a smooth grid uh, sandpaper. And we're just basically going to sand the smooth area out so that way the paint has something to grip onto and it's not going to peel and crack on you. Alright, so don't worry about scratching the leather because the paint is going to cover those scratches and those scratches is what's going to hold the paint right into your shoe. Now after you finish just sanding the area that you're going to be painting, you're ready to paint. And for my painting tool, I'm just going to use my Temp2 airbrush it's from Temp2. And I'm going to be using my Createx in green and also my Createx in black because I'm going to paint this area right here a dark shade of green. So that's what I have in my cup now is a mixture of the two colors to create a dark green color. Now I'm just going to use my Temp2 compressor along with the uh, Temp2 airbrush gun. Now you can also use um, a brush or you can also use a sponge. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to use my airbrush. Okay, so after you applied your first color, this needs to dry before you layer on the rest of the colors. And like I said, we're going to do a finish in here, kind of like a snake skin pattern. And that's going to require a few more colors. So we're going to let this dry, all right? But on this part right here, I'm just going to use a green color. So I can actually paint this part over here while this is drying. Okay, so I just finished uh, painting this part of the shoe in a different shade of green. And by the time you finish this part, this part right here should be dry and ready for our next color. And uh, like I said, we're going to be doing a faux snake pattern. And I'm just going to use this fishnet material right here. This is actually a part of an old laundry basket that's already ratted and kind of like went bye-bye. But I saved the material for this kind of project. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place this on the area that I'm going to put the pattern in, which is going to be in this front right here and make sure that it's nice and taut within, you know, the area. So that way it doesn't kind of buckle like that. All right, it helps sometimes to put a little bit of adhesive to it, but sometimes I just kind of like let the material kind of like grip into it. Uh, if it's giving a good fight, then feel free to use a little bit of an adhesive and um, that's going to create our scale pattern. Okay, so as you can see in here, I already set the uh, mesh right on the shoe and I secured it with some binder clips and now I'm ready to paint. So what I'm doing this time is I'm actually mixing green and white together to create kind of like a mint color. So I'm just going to spray that now directly on top right here to get that nice fish scale pattern. Okay, so once this layer of color dries, we're going to create our pattern. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a couple of crisscrosses. And this is actually a lighter shade of mint green now. So I added more white to the color to make another light color. And I'm actually going to trace it down a little bit closer. So that way I can get my X marks. A little bit more accurate, just like that. And then from there, 
I'm just going to continue on with my next line. Okay, just like so. And same thing on this side, just like that, until I get to the tip. And like so. Okay, so next what I'm doing is I'm just basically outlining the white. And I'm also kind of just splattering all over the green part. So that way it kind of creates a uh, kind of like a multi-tone green on the green part. That the main purpose really is to outline the white. And this is going to make the colors pop. And then I'm just really splattering all over the green. Just like that. So you can see kind of like the patterns coming along nicely. And then for added dimension, I decided to put a little bit of a silver color. So basically, I just mix white and black. And I'm just going to apply that right in the center of the diamonds. It's going to give me a little bit more of a... Kind of like a real looking effect over there. So it's coming along very nicely. Okay, so once all the colors are nice and dry, you're ready to remove your fishnet pattern material. And here's the reveal. How awesome is that? Look at that. So we're going to let this dry further. It needs to dry for another half an hour, even though it's dry to the touch already, because we're not adding any more colors to it. It still needs to sit and dry further for about another half hour, for about half an hour, actually. And because, like I said earlier, we used Createx, we're going to need to heat set this. We're going to use a hair dryer or a, uh, a heat gun. Uh, to do that. But first we're going to let it sit and dry further for another 30 minutes. Okay, now we're back and it's been about 45 minutes since it's been sitting out so it should be uh, just enough time for uh, for it to heat set. So I'm just going to use my craft heat gun. Again, you can use your uh, hair dryer in hot setting. We're just going to heat set this for about 14 to 15 seconds per area. So. 14 to 15 right here, and then 14 to 15 on each side that I paint them. Okay, and then we're just going to let that cool back to room temperature. Okay, and then our final step is sealing all the paint and the color in with an acrylic finisher. Now this is again from Angelos, which is uh, designed for shoes, leather, anything of sort, but it's mainly for acrylic paint, really. They come in different finishes. This one's satin. You can get gloss and high gloss. Now high gloss is going to give you a patent leather look. So um, for this shoe, I'm going to use my satin finish. So basically, I'm just going to use a cosmetic sponge. This is just your standard makeup sponge. And you're just basically going to apply a nice even coat of the finisher right into the areas that you painted. Now, if this is a gloss finish, it's going to be the same exact application method. And what you want to do is you don't want to rub hard. All right, you just want to basically apply an even coating of the finisher right into the areas that you painted and for this one I'm actually going to also finish the uh, part that I did not paint which is its natural color and by doing that I'm going to get a nice even finishing on the whole shoe so I'm just going to get that right into the part of the shoe that I did not paint because I just want to reseal that area and I'm basically just going to do this on the whole shoe. Okay, allow the acrylic finisher to dry for about two to three minutes and you get that beautiful satin finish to the look. Again, you can use glossy uh, or super glossy, uh, whichever you prefer. And once it's dry, your shoes are ready to be worn. Now, if the airbrush gun you used is for uh, makeup as well, that's fine. You just need to thoroughly clean this. It's stainless steel, so you can actually clean this thoroughly and sanitize it and whatnot. Or, you know, if you have more than one gun like I do, then designate one for crafts and painting, much like this one. And then, you know, have other guns for makeup application as well. Okay, so here's the finished product. Yay! I'm going to rock this somewhere. I don't know, either a beauty trade show or a show, like a stage show or something. But 
I'm definitely going to wear this now as opposed to just being in my shoe closet collecting dust. Yay! So there you have it, and hopefully that helps you guys out. So use your beauty tools, not just for makeup and stuff, but you can also um, be crafty with it. And remember to always think outside of the box. Don't just use them because they're designed for makeup. You can use it for other things as well. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, I'll see you guys soon. Bye!